In this lecture, I'm going to take you through the practical implementation of linear regression and multiple linear regression in R. And what you see over here is the basic syntax that we enter for linear regression and multiple linear regression in R. So first you are going to specify a variable, then you specify a function LM and this stands for linear regression. Over here we specify Y, so our response variable comes first. Then we specify tilde, then X which is the explanatory variable and that is followed up by another argument called data and in which we supply the data frame containing Y and X. And while I'm going to demonstrate this lecture using the inbuilt data frame iris, even when you read in your own CSVs, they're most likely going to be in the format of a data frame. And that is what you need to pass in as your data. And if you want to carry out multiple linear regression, then we follow the same schema, specify first the response variable after specifying the function LM here, then tilde, then all the predictor variables that you want to include x1, x2, and then have your data frame. And there are certain variants of it which I will introduce to you now. Just before we get started, it is worth remembering that in any regression that you carry out, y can only be a numerical continuous attribute and x can be either numerical or categorical. And these are the names of our columns in the iris data frame. So species, now that is the categorical variable but all others are numerical and you can even check that. So let us look at. So species is a categorical variable but now I want to model the variation in petal length and this is petal length and as you can see this is a continuous numerical variable as a function of sepal length and this is linear regression and that is what we do that with a single x variable so we specify the variable fit one lm the function for linear regression here is my y the petal length and tilde and followed by sepal length so i want to see if there's any quantitative dependency between petal length and sepal length and that is that if changes in sepal length influence petal length or not and the data frame is iris I'm going to run this. Now let us just look at the summary. The first thing that we look at over here is the adjusted R square and the p-value of this adjusted R square. So my adjusted R square is 0 0.7583 and the p-value is much lower than 0 0.05. So I can say that essentially this is statistically significant and what this value tells me is that this particular model fit one explains 75.83 variation in petal length. Now this is something that I had discussed previously with you that what exactly R square tells us. But we even look need to look at our intercept and the slope of sepal length. So over here we are just going to focus on these two columns estimate and the p-value. So the PR over here stands for p-values and the estimate is the value of A and B. So intercept that stands for A which is essentially the value when x will be equal to 0 and the sepal length this is my predictor variable and this is the b-value the slope of my predictor and in this case it is 1.8 since both these values are less than 0 0.05 I can say that essentially they are statistically significant and I can build a linear regression using these now and that is something I would like you to think about what your linear regression equation will look like now. So now I, I will move on and I'm going to cover multiple regression. So we follow the same schema, the function LM, response variable Y, which is petal length, tilde. Now if we want to include all remaining variables, and essentially if I want all my remaining variables left over here, 
So apart from petal length, if I want everything to be included in my regression, then I'm going to specify a dot, dot, comma, data and the data frame. And the dot comma means that you include all the remaining variables of your data frame as a predictor. But actually right now, as I mentioned, I just want to do this regression with quantitative predictors. So I can subtract species. So if you have an entire data frame like I do, and you just want to subtract one given value, then you can do that by petal length, tilde comma a uh, tilde full stop which means include all the columns in the data frame except petal length then subtract species from that so we will remove species from the analyses and if we don't want all variables and if you feel that this particular schema is not working then we do this the most common way we specify the function lm response variable tilde predictor variable sepal well, width, another predictor variable petal width and so on using a plus sign and this is very important as we start working going into more details of linear regression so this is how we usually end up specifying our predictor variables by using plus plus and so on. So just let me run this particular regression model with only uh, numerical predictor variables. So let's just go. And now let's look at the summary. So here my adjusted R square is 0.96 and instead of multiple R squared, I'm going to take the adjusted R square and taking the adjusted R square is very important in cases of multiple linear regression because what happens is that as we go on adding more and more predictors, the value of R square goes up and we can essentially end up inflating the value of R square. So what adjusted R square does is to sort of penalize the model for including more predictor variables. So we cannot, when we take adjusted R square, it has accounted for the fact that we, ha we have more than one predictor variables and it doesn't produce an estimated or, or an inflated calculation of R square. So we go in for adjusted R square and this means that 96.74% of variation in petal length is explained by the model fit to. And now let us look at the coefficients because these are the regression coefficients. This is the value of intercept A. This is the value of sepal length corresponding to this is the value of slope corresponding to sepal length, so it is 0.72. This is the value of slope corresponding to sepal width and petal width. And here are the p-values which tell us if, if this is statistically significant or not. And now I want you to think what your regression equation will look like in this case. Just take a couple of seconds and think it through, think it through and write it down please. Okay, here goes. This is what your linear regression equation looks like. It is petal length y, the response variable, minus 7.1, the intercept. So that is going to be the value of petal length when there's no sepal length to consider. And this is my sepal length and the slope. And what this mean is, is means is that if the sepal length increases or changes by one, the corresponding change in petal length will be y, will be 1.85. And now with the th three numerical variables, this is the multiple linear regression petal length y. I've included all the slope coefficients. See, 0.73, minus 0.64, 1.44. But where's my intercept? I've not included the intercept term, y. This is because the p-value is much greater than 0 0.05. So I can conclude that the intercept is not statistically significant. So my multiple linear regression equation, it only comprises of the slope coefficients. Now 
and the corresponding predictor value. So it is going to be 0 0.73 minus 0 0.65 into sepal width plus 1.44 into petal width. And what these values represent is essentially this is B1, B2, B3 because it corresponds to things like X1, X2. So every X1 has its own corresponding slope as in B1, B2. And in this case, all of these are statistically significant. So each B value is the change in Y that a given X can bring on with the other X's being constant. So if I keep my sepal width and petal width constant, a one unit change in sepal length will bring about a change of 0.73 in my petal length. And essentially this is how we construct regression equations with, uh, with one or more predictor variables. And once we've constructed these equations, we can predict the value of petal length for different values of sepal length, sepal width, and petal width. And this is how we essentially formally, mathematically quantify the relationship between y and x or y and multiple x's. So this is what le makes linear regression so widely used and so powerful. But when you have so many, when you end up using three variables the way you did, the way we have in this one, so you have sepal length, sepal width, petal width, these are all statistically significant. All of them introduce influence y based on these coefficient values. I mean, this is the magnitude of, uh, essentially if you keep everything else common and one unit change in sepal length will bring about 0.73 or 0.65 or 1.44 change in petal length. We've established that. But actually, which of how much of the variance in the response variable is explained by each predictor or which is the most important predictor in terms of influencing the change in y. And in order to quantify the amount of variance explained by each predictor, because what linear regression has told us that which of our variables are statistically significant and their slope values, but it hasn't told us that which predictor variable is explaining how much variance for that or the independent effects of the different predictor variables on y. So for that we are going to read in library higher dot part and once we read that we can store the response variables in the variable x like so. So 2 to 4 are my response variables the x values and I'm going to specify hp is equal to higher part and this is going to be iris sepal length which is my y and x. So once I run that I get this particular graph and it tells me that petal length the independent effect of petal length is 44 percent for petal width it is around 35 percent and 10 percent for sepal width and it just tells us that out of all these three variables predictor variables which is the most important variable in explaining the variation in y and its contribution to explaining the bespoke variation so remember the entire model that explained around 96 percent of variation in y and and that is what R square told us. But R square or adjusted R square it never tells us that what is the contribution of the different x variables in this. So the contribution of petal length in explaining the variation in y is around 44 percent, 35 percent for petal width, and around 10 percent for sepal width. So this is the individual contribution of the variables, predictor variables in explaining the variation in y. And that is something higher part tells us because R squared just tells you how strong or how good your model is. Now, 
obviously linear regression is one of the most common regressions that you will work with no matter what your field is and linear regression has to you need to satisfy a certain set of conditions before using linear regression otherwise you cannot use linear regression or at least not without further manipulations and analyses so in the next lecture we are going to actually look look at the conditions of linear regression